Welcome to another episode of Cadence Fishing TV and part three in our series on float fishing on rivers. And the floats that we're going to talk about in this video are these Avon type floats. And I'm going to look at three different patterns that pretty much cover all my Avon style fishing when I'm river fishing. I've got this shorter Avon float with a pronounced body, a wire stem, a longer, more elongated body with also a wire stem, and then the famous crow quill balsa float. So first up, let's have a look at this wire stem Avon. So this pattern of Avon float um, is really, really useful and one that I use a lot. So first up, I'll just explain the difference in my mind between an Avon float and a stick float and a bolo. So for me, I'm using an Avon float when I need to use quite a, a good capacity of float in terms of the shotting capacity, but also when I want to fish with a positive rig, like with a bulk, uh, either made of shot or an olivet. And these floats, being short and quite squat in nature, are great on shallower river pegs, pegs that are perhaps a bit pacier and boily. And when I'm targeting bigger fish like chub and, and barbel, with bigger baits, like bunches of maggots, bunches of casters, or bits of meat. So this pattern here is actually a number one alloy Avon from Dave Howell's range. Um, you'll notice that it's got a wire stem, and the wire stem really helps with controlling the float, particularly in those type of swims, so where you've got boily, turbulent water. The wire stem offers some weight, and the fact that it's streamlined allows the float to to remain in a, in a decent sort of um, route down the river without getting too much affected by the turbulence. You'll also note that it's got quite a pronounced shoulder on the float. And that's really great for controlling and holding back the float in those fast type of boily pegs. And I tend to carry these floats in capacity from about two to six gram. That pretty much covers this style of fishing for me. And you'll also notice that the body is made from shape balsa and it's got a nice tapered tip on it, which is a very nice buoyant tip. I can still dot it down so that it's sensitive, but it's a float that I'm going to be able to see at range when I'm trotting my float down the river and hopefully be able to spot bites and present the float perfectly. So that's an example of the type of float. And I've actually set one up here. So I'll just quickly show you how I've set this up. And um, the rod I've set it up on is our 15 foot number two. Um, in previous videos, I talked about obviously a longer rod, 15 foot, really helps with control, particularly on days when you've got um, windy conditions, maybe a downstream wind, and when you're fishing on deeper pegs. So the sort of rods I'd like to be using this type of float with uh, from 13 foot up to 15 foot typically, and obviously I'm using a more powerful rod, so I'd be using the number twos or threes within our cadence range to balance with the heavier tackle that we're using. So I've matched that up with our CS10 4000 reel and main line, fairly robust. I've gone with our five pound edge tackle float mono. So um, that's a really nice floating line, beautiful and supple, very smooth, floats very well. It's also quite robust as well. So that's my thinking there in terms of the main line. Um, let's have a look at the actual rig. So in terms of depths, this type of float, I'd be looking to fish from two, maybe three foot of water, up to about eight or 10 foot of water. And I mentioned in the introduction, it's all about a positive rig, a little bit like the bolo fishing. So in this case, I've got a, a three gram float and I've got a two and a half gram olivette, and I've just shotted that up with number eight, one number eight either side of the olivette, nice and neat, means I can move the olivette around very nicely and easily. It's very streamlined, and I've got another couple of number eights below there, which I can utilize if I need to. And I've also got um, a double bulk effectively, so I've got a, a good positive dropper, which is made up of four number eights in this case. You'll notice that my hook length is quite short. Um, most of the time I like to use longer hook lengths, but when I'm fishing with this type of rig, I need to use a short hook length. 
because the positive nature of the rig and the fact that I'll be using bigger baits, I want to get those baits down and I want to fish them in a positive way so I want to be able to read the bites well and I suppose that's around about a 10 inch hook length to my shot and then I've got probably two foot up to my Olivet. Now obviously there's no set rules with this, you're going to change it around to suit the peg best. If it was a shallower peg I might move the Olivet further down, if it was deeper peg I got the opportunity to move the bulk up, change the presentation. But for the most part with this type of rig I don't use any spread shot below the Olivet. So hook length wise I'd be looking to use fairly heavy hook lengths to match the tackle in terms of the fish that I'm targeting. I'll be using from probably minimum 012 up to 016 hook lengths and hook wise I'll be using um, sort of trusted patterns like my B711s and also the wide gate power hooks. So I'll just quickly show you those. So the B711s that we've talked about in previous videos. Uh, be looking to use them from sort of a 15 with maggots and casters, 13 even, and an 11 when I'm fishing with uh, sort of six mil bits of meat or bigger baits, even corn sometimes. So for me, this is a fantastic style of fishing when I want to target those bigger fish. And in certain situations when, perhaps in the summer, um, you're getting pestered by small fish and this is a positive rig that will enable me to fish baits that will focus on the bigger fish. Um, there's just a selection of the hook lengths. I do like the uh, Edge Tackle Pure Fluorocarbon. Mentioned that before, the fact that it's quite uh, robust and stiff. Um, when you're trotting the float a long way down your peg and bringing the rig back, uh, it's less prone to twisting up. So that's the, the first type of uh, Avon float that I wanted to talk about. And the second one is one that I don't use as much, but on its day uh, can be very, very effective as well. And this has got very similar attributes to the, the first float in that it's got a nice wire stem, but you'll notice that these floats are longer. So for me, this is the type of float that I want to use when I want to Similar type of presentation, similar situation to the first float, but perhaps I'm faced with a deeper peg. So sometimes on rivers like the Y and the Seven, you know, you can be faced with pegs that are 12, even, even deeper, 14 foot, 16 foot, especially when you've got water on. And this type of Avon really comes into its own. So I'd carry them in similar capacities from three gram up to six gram. And, uh, the same kind of attribute, so I've got that nice bulbous tip and a slightly more streamlined shape in keeping with the longer length of the float. So they're very nicely balanced, they're a float that I can cast, uh, a bit like a bolo really, cast it out towards the middle of the river. A lot of the time in these situations when I'm fishing deeper pegs, I'll be fishing close to the bank. And these floats are also very useful for when you're fishing with baits like maggots and casters and you're targeting fish like dace and roach in a challenging situation. So in a deeper peg, you've got this turbulent flow, that's where these really come in. Bit of a crossover there really between a stick float and this type of Avon, but they really do justify themselves in the range and in terms of the floats that I carry. And this one is the uh, Dave Harrell number no. 2 Alloy Avon. So in terms of the rig, it'd be exactly the same very positive with a, a bulk and then some number eight droppers that I can employ as a double bulk. So with this rig, I might actually consider spreading the shot out from the bulk if I was targeting fish like roach and dace and I wasn't really casting far from the bank. So if I was just doing a nice, nice underarm cast, just fishing a rod, a rod length out, I can fish that very effectively and I can improve the presentation by moving the bulk up and spreading those number eights out. That's actually a really devastating rig in situations I talked about when I'm targeting roach and dace on maggots. So just again, just proves how versatile even a simple float rig like that can be in terms of adjusting 
the shot. And that's why I always go back to using number eights, num lead number eights, wherever possible, um, to just give me that versatility. Obviously, if I'd shot it up with uh, bigger dropper shot, like number fours or number ones, I wouldn't have that sort of versatility. And I don't think the, the rig is quite as streamlined and as effective. So that's the wire stem type of Avon. So I'm now going to talk about a different type of Avon float. Well, I've classified it as an Avon float anyway. And these are the Croquill Avons. Now these are a really traditional type of float. It's a float that, uh, I mean, has definitely stood the test of time. Absolutely super efficient and a beautiful float to fish with. So the situations I would use this. So perhaps different to the wire stem havens that we talked about. This is going to be in a, in a swim that's probably not as boily. So you're faced with a more even type of flow, um, but you've got a good depth, um, sort of over six foot. And um, these floats were originally designed um, for fishing on rivers like the Bristol Avon, which were deep. So 12, 13, 14 foot deep, uh, not too powerful. And when you're fishing with bigger baits like bread and but it also fishing with um, maggots and casters as well. And Topper Haskins was the famous angler from the Bath area down, in, down on the Bristol Avon that really was devastating with this type of float. So you can see it, it differs greatly from the, from the wire stem floats in that it's got a balsa body, but it's beautifully shaped, very, very streamlined. Hasn't really got a, a pronounced shoulder at all. And that balsa is actually mounted on some crow quill. Now crow quills are really interesting material for float fishing. Um, the downside is that it's quite fragile so you have to be careful with them but the positive is the fact that they're so sensitive and the match between the crow quill and the balsa works absolutely beautifully. So what you achieve is you've got a, a beautiful float that's got a really good capacity from the body made of balsa and it's very, very lightweight. So the quill gives it lightweight and the, the massive advantage of that is when you're casting. Because when you're casting with a bulk that you're gonna be using with this type of float, the bulk is just taking the float with it. There's no conflict between the float and the bulk when you're casting. So it just simply follows, follows the bulk and it's just beautifully quiet as well. Lands very gently on the water and when you strike, because it's so streamlined and light, it just exits the water so cleanly. So you don't get any of that problem where you can bump fish by hitting a, hitting a float as you're striking that creates resistance and then can bump the fish off. In fact, it's quite funny. Um, I hadn't used one for a while and last year I was, I was using one, um, catching some nice fish. But to start with, I was almost striking too hard and the float was coming flying out the water. So you just have to recalibrate yourself when you're using a float like this because they are so streamlined. Um, the fact that you've got this nice visible tip as well, a little bit like the other Avons, but you'll notice this has got some more finesse. So the nature of this crow quill enables it to be nice and tapered and you've still got a lot of sensitivity. So the days when you are just fishing with single maggot, double maggot or caster, uh, targeting roach and chub, they really are beautiful. You can really control the float and really read it, but also see it down your peg. So for me, these are a very, very special float and one that I will use. So I've set this up here um, just to show. Very, very simple. Um, I've sort of set it up in contrast to the uh, wire stem Avon in that I've used shot. Now, sometimes I do prefer to use shot on a, a crow quill haven, not just because it's more traditional, but uh, I just feel it makes the rig more streamlined. And I like the fact that I can adjust my float by changing the float size. So maybe I start on a three gram, the wind gets up and I need to step up to a four gram. I can just change the float and just add the relevant shot onto my bolt very quickly. So it's a very quick and efficient style of fishing. Um, the shot I'm using in this case is these uh, Dinsmore number ones. Uh, obviously non-toxic. 
and uh, I really like them because they're coated and you know just as a general rule you don't need to bite them on you just need to gently place them onto the line and just squeeze them gently which will be enough to keep it in place and then you can actually move that around so I really do like these uh, Dinsmore shot for that. If I was going to move them a long way, I would actually just use my fingernail, put it in the groove, take the shot off and then place it back up. So I'm fishing this rig with a bit more finesse than on the uh, wire stem. So I'm using our four pound floating mono as a main line. Um, just in keeping with perhaps fishing slight, slightly lighter hook lengths and smaller hooks to try and balance everything nicely. Hook length wise I'd be using, I'd really be wanting to use 010, um, probably up to about 012 on this type of rig. If I was fishing bread, um, bigger baits like that, then perhaps I would go up to 016. But this float really fits in for me when I want that Avon type of presentation, Avon type of float, but when I'm fishing with a bit more finesse. Now you'll notice on this one that I have actually just used uh, two number four shot as a dropper. So again, I'm not going to be spreading shot out with this rig. I want a nice positive rig, but I could use eight number eights or six number eights instead of that, which I might do on a different situation. But I just wanted to show a different type of uh, shot in. And again, I'd be using a shortish hook length, just around about eight to 10 inches in, in length. Hook-wise, uh, probably fishing with a bit more finesse, so the good old carbon match sizes from 16 up to 20. Uh, wonderful hook. Obviously got the finesse for fishing with single baits like maggots and casters. And if I was going to be targeting more chub, then I would probably step up to the 7-Eleven in uh, smaller sizes like from a 17 up to a 21 but uh, yeah it's a float that I don't use a lot now but on its day a little bit like the lignum stick when we talked about in the stick float section they really do work and certainly when it comes to pleasure fishing I don't really think there's a much better way of, of fishing an Avon float than fishing with a traditional Quoquil Avon float. The rod that I've used in this situation, a bit longer, so I've gone with a 16 foot number one. Uh, typically when you're fishing on deeper pegs, like on the Bristol Avon, maybe 14 foot, 15 foot, obviously a 16 foot rod's really gonna help. Um, casting wise, it's all about just a nice, efficient underarm cast, nice and smooth, and just make sure that you feather the line by trapping the finger on the spool when the, when the float's just about to hit the water so that you spread the float out in a nice line um, with the hook and the float so you're not getting any type of tangle um, as the float enters the water. So that's the Crowquill Avon and kind of concludes that section on Avon floats. Um, check out all our products on the Cadence website for the rods and the reels and our edge tackle website for all the for the line.